right. I need some of my holy water. I've got some leftovers. There you go. <laughs> so, I was feeling like I might need to explain myself. It's going to take so long to explain myself over many videos. Um, after my last video, um, lest you misunderstand, I am not airy fairy new age. I don't believe there are multiple Christs and Christ stories. There is only one. Just because North America got it, supposedly independent of the old world, doesn't mean it's not the same story. Um, I believe where there is no missionaries, the message goes itself. It goes itself. And people are suffering and crying out. It's gonna hear them and it will arrive. Um, it's possible North America um, had I mean, we, we know that the Irish were here, you know, those Irish, they get around. We know the Irish were in North America long before Columbus. Um, we know the Scandinavians were here, and many of them did settle and live here. Um, it was damn Irish, though. For all we know, a couple monks came over and spread a story that was compatible with the, um, the native population. Um, it's the same story. We can't get away from it. It's like a weed. You can try to invent a new story, a new religion, but the weed is always going to spring up. And in the least likely places, it's going to spring up. This horrible, terrible weed, this tree, this mythical tree of redemption and grace. Um, you will not have a successful belief without the story of grace and that terrible tree and rising from the dead. It's just not gonna happen. Um, just not gonna happen. Sorry, I mean, I hate to break it to you. It's just, um, there's no such thing as human perfection. We've been here tens of thousands of years. And we've proven that it's written into our DNA. Maybe it's a form of survival. Maybe it's a fail-safe. That we are not perfect and we never will be. We have to accept that and forgive that. And also take responsibility. Um, just because we're never going to be perfect here. I think there's such a thing as perfectly imperfect. Um, I. I personally believe the imperfection is meant to be a thorn in the side of evil. That's what I think. <laughs> I believe I am here to be of annoyance and a thorn in the side of evil. I was um, watching Jonathan Peugeot and he was talking about the importance of ritual and the sacredness of it. And I agree, but at the same time, as he was talking about this, and this pageant and this tradition that we have in these rituals, um, they give us security. But I was laughing as he was talking about it because I was having childhood memories of my mom. <laughs> and 
and in church and how she makes fun of it's it's not the ritual she respects ritual um it's the arrogance of religious people the pompousness and so when i was growing up in church service she thought it was too serious and people were too full of themselves and she would pick boogers on purpose during service and she'd look around like this like this and see if anyone noticed I would go like this and I would just always oh, would crack up when I was little when she would do that because <laughs> people would act like they didn't see her <laughs> she was trying to get a reaction and then um, one Sunday service we had gotten these um, goofy glasses that looked like your eyes were bugging out they had stickers on them with these buggy eyes and she brought those and she put those on and was looking all around in the service and People acted like they didn't see her. And then when we would be singing and clapping and singing these songs that she thought was stupid because a lot of the new songs are like new pop. It's just boring, dead music. It's dead. It's about nothing. It's the same word over and over again like, oh, we will praise you, we will praise you, we will praise you. It's this airy fairy stuff. And people would be clapping and feeling all happy and clap and my mom would purposely clap off beat so there'd be this one clap when really loud off beat in between everyone else's claps <laughs> so she liked to make fun of the ritual the false ritual though it was very false there was nothing really actually sacred in the churches that I grew up in and I went to a lot of churches. I know a lot about religions and cults and beliefs and um, um, I'm gonna have to talk about I think I'm gonna have to talk about sometime my my parents and the the conflict between what I kind of call the law, I'm not quite sure how to explain it, and grace, and how it was difficult for those two to balance and meet. And it's kind of funny because I would say my mom was the law, but she was always making fun of it and spoofing it too. And my dad was very, very focused on um, the grace and not the law at all there was it was two very conflicting things and the funny thing is, is he was very into the grace factor um and very into appearing nice and agreeable and my mom would be more the law factor, although she made fun of it. Maybe when you know something, you can break the rules. Um, she did respect it. I think this is another video, though, kind of talking about that. And my mom was the less agreeable person, too. Um, maybe I'll have to do a, a, a Jordan Peterson Big Five personality traits uh, talk. <clears throat> anyway, um, oh, and another thing I was thinking about that was very important in the, the North American law of peace that the, the Longhouse people, the, the Iroquois Confederacy had, um, and most of the native tribes, was observing thanksgiving and gratefulness. Um, I think we've forgotten that nowadays. That's a ritual and a tradition. 
it's not just on Thanksgiving holiday, the one day of the year, it is we really, really, this is my opinion, need to observe gratefulness on a daily basis. We need to be thankful instead of always nitpicking on the failures and what we don't have and what's going wrong. We have to be thankful and grateful every day. It's, it's so vital, so important. Um, there is so much just in this room when I'm looking around here. This is amazing what I have to be grateful for. It's, it's amazing. I have a warm, insulated room in a cold climate. Um, I have this beautiful carpet, this beautiful wool rug over here. I with colors that are amazing. I'm so grateful I can see these colors. Um, I, I'm grateful that I can feel that I have feeling and sensation. I'm grateful that I can speak and that I can hear, um, that I can play my guitar even though I do such a horrible job that I can actually do it anyway. I'm thankful for it. That I can read, that I was educated and can read these amazing authors. That have this beautiful glass cup. I'm grateful for this knowledge. I mean, there's so many tiny little things. This is all something to be grateful for. It's, it's just amazing to discover. I mean, just right here in this little section, I can discover amazing things. I mean, um, I've got these dominoes, puzzles, tape. Come on, who's not grateful for tape? Duct tape. Come on. I mean, that's the cure all and the fix all for everything. Look at this. These are, looks like, like goggles maybe for riding a motorcycle. I mean, you would have to, let's see if I can get, I don't know how to get them on. They'll stretch. Uh, I'm grateful for the color green. It's green. <laughs> uh, um, there's just so much around me just right here to be grateful for on a daily basis. But mostly, I really am grateful that I'm never, ever, ever lonely. Even when I'm alone, I'm not lonely. Because I have so much history and so many stories embedded in me. And so many people that worked hard to create me and get me here. And I have that story of grace. And if I didn't have that story and that great myth, so-called myth, that's more real to me than anything else, and per so personal I really can't talk about it, and it's so personal that it's not a religion to me, um, if I didn't have that, outside of me and inside of me, um, I couldn't have survived what I have survived. So, that's what I have to say at this moment, that I am thankful. As Spock, the wise logician, Truck used to say, live long and prosper. Thank you for watching.